CLA courts a different, younger breed of Mercedes buyer with more credibility in this second generation form. As before, this compact front driven, stylized model offers a choice of either this four door coupe or an alternative shooting brake estate, but this time there's a cabin that's really distinctively designed, just like the exterior, and full of smart connectivity. Even if you've never thought of yourself as the sort of person who might drive a Mercedes, there's just a chance you might like this one. What kind of Mercedes would suit a buyer with a younger outlook? A customer needing a sensible but uber stylish compact car, tinseled with technology and fashionable appeal, yet for sale at an accessible price. Well, evidently this one. The CLA, available in this four-door coupe form or as a so-called shooting brake estate. The idea here is to bring a fashionable feel to the Stuttgart brand's growing family of smaller models and in doing so significantly lower the average age of the typical Mercedes buyer. The CLA has done just that and much more. In Europe, more than half of those who bought the original model launched in 2013 had never purchased from the brand before and 75% of them went on to subsequently buy another Merc. Glance at these dream demographics, then appreciate that this was the very first compact front-driven Mercedes model to be launched in the US, and you begin to understand why company insiders describe the introduction of the original C117 series version of this car as the Mark's most significant model launch in the last two decades. Hence the significance of this second generation C118 series model. Introduced in the spring of 2019, this initial four-door coupe, quickly followed by the shooting brake estate we mentioned, then rapid Mercedes AMG 35 and 45 formatic high-performance models. There are still those who wonder whether this is a real Mercedes, perhaps because it's front-driven, or possibly because volume versions share engines and transmissions with Renault. Ever since the very first Baby Benz, the 190 W210 model of 1982, the Stuttgart brand has been used to this kind of carping and tends to produce cars that rise above it to eventually become very much accepted in its lineup, as is now the case with the CLA. Interestingly, these sorts of questions never seem to be directed at the other small front-driven Mercedes models that share this one's MFA2 platform and much of its engineering, primarily the fourth generation A-Class hatch, the third generation B-Class MPV and SUVs like the second generation GLA and the newer GLB. Probably this is because the CLA has more upmarket aspirations than its compact showroom stablemates. Its intention, as before, to more affordably deliver to buyers the four-door coupe and swept back sporting estate template the brand's done well with in the last couple of decades in larger market segments with various versions of its luxury CLS series models. This time round with the CLA, the technology's borrowed from those larger segments too. As you'll discover if you take a look at this car's interior technology and experience its latest semi-autonomous driving tech. Plus, this C118 series model is usefully longer, wider and more spacious than its predecessor. Given that a more practical rear-driven C-Class can be had for much the same money though, the reason you'd buy one will still have much to do with the way this car looks. It remains a rather trendy trinket, but is there more to the appeal of this Mercedes than that? Let's find out. Mercedes markets this car as a sporty alternative to its more conventional C-Class saloon. On one hand, the CLA's sporty styling leads you to expect that. On the other, a front rather than rear-driven chassis and the lack of optional V6 power makes it a tad surprising. But sportiness is something that Stuttgart has clearly decided that all its modern compact models must have, especially this one, which gets its own handling tweaks and damping design, a so-called lowered comfort package. Does that sound contradictory? Yes, we thought so too. 
Anyway, the fundamental suspension layout is the same as the one you'll find on higher-end versions of the A-Class, a multi-link setup featuring at the rear. For the CLA, though, the system's been tweaked differently, primarily with noise and vibration countering hydraulic suspension bushes on the front axle. There's also a stiffer front anti-roll bar than the A-Class here, plus a much wider front and rear track and a lower centre of gravity. So it's not surprising that this car feels significantly more dynamic to drive than its compact, front-driven showroom stablemates. Or at least it does in its more powerful forms. Even if you've decided that the CLA is indeed a real Mercedes, you may still have a few issues as to which of the variants on offer here constitute a real CLA. The base CLA 180 and CLA 200 petrol models do, after all, use 136 and 163 horsepower versions of a relatively humble 1.3 litre petrol engine sourced from Renault, which rather labours when mated to the Getrag 7G DCT 7-speed automatic gearbox that all ordinary petrol-powered CLA models have to have. In theory, the CLA 180 makes 62 miles an hour from rest in 9 seconds on the way to 134 miles an hour, figures marginally improved by the CLA 200 to 8.2 seconds and 142 miles an hour. In practice, these entry-level variants feel significantly slower than those stats suggest. Having considered that, and perhaps the perspective that a car of this sort has no business sharing an engine with a Renault Clio, then you might well want to limit your perusals to a CLA fitted with a 2-litre engine, which is what we've got today. The popular choice here is the CLA 220, which offers 190 horsepower and is the only mainstream model in the range available with the option of 4-matic four 4-wheel four drive. Both versions of this variant sprint to 62 miles an hour in 7 seconds on the way to a top speed of around 150. Should that be insufficient? Efficient, then you'll want the CLA 250 model we selected for this test, which offers 224 horsepower, enough power to make more credible this Mercedes claim for fashionable sportiness. 62 miles an hour in this case is dispatched in 6.3 seconds en route to a top speed, which has to be limited to 155 miles an hour. There's nothing wrong with these figures, but in driving this car, we have occasionally found ourselves with a few reservations over how they're achieved. You'd perhaps expect the entry-level 1.3-litre petrol unit to sound a bit strained when pushing on trying to shift a tonne and a half of Stuttgart real estate. Given though the premium price tags apply to the 2.0-litre 200 and 250 petrol variants, you might hope for a little more refinement and mechanical richness at this level in the range. Or, if not that, at least something comparable to the smooth 2.0-litre turbo unit used in Volkswagen Group models. Instead, a rather coarse engine note prevails should you try and replicate the quoted performance potential and venture beyond 4,000 revs. Bumble about in this car and that's not an issue, but then you start to notice the way the DCT auto gearbox could be smoother in its down changes in commuting traffic. These aren't huge issues, and if you've set your heart on a CLA, they won't dissuade you from choosing one. But on what is now a £35,000 car at this level in the range, they start to take on some significance. Better in these respects is the 2-litre diesel fitted to the alternative CLA 220D variant, a big improvement on the ratty old 2.1-litre unit used in the previous black pump fueled version of this model. Predictably, it helps that this power plant has significantly more torque than the petrol unit. And of even greater significance is the fact that the CLA 220D uses a more sophisticated 8G DCT 8-speed auto gearbox, which is smoother and better suited to the kind of car this is trying to be. The performance stats, 62 miles an hour in 7.1 seconds en route to 152, are virtually the same as those we quoted for the CLA 220, but thanks to 400 newton meters of torque, the mid-range overtaking capability of a CLA diesel is actually superior to what you get in this petrol 250 variant. So we've covered the mainstream engines on offer in this car and referenced the fact that it's more dynamically orientated than other compact front-driven Mercedes models. That doesn't, though, mean a really super sharp handling demeanour for more ordinary CLAs. You could argue that it's appropriate, given the slightly different customer demographic being courted here. As before, there's plenty of grip and traction through the turns, aided by torque vectoring that seamlessly applies slight brake pressure to the outside wheel in tight bends to help get the power down where it's needed. 
drive like that and you'll find body control kept well in check, but the damping setup necessary to achieve that is a touch on the firm side. Most will find ride quality quite acceptable on the highway though, where exceptionally sleek aerodynamics aid impressive levels of refinement. We're slightly less enamoured with the electromechanical direct steering system, which is accurate, but doesn't give you a huge amount of feel for what's happening beneath the front wheels at higher cornering speeds, and never really encourages you to have much fun. Steering's one of the elements influenced by the standard dynamic select driving mode system. The others are throttle response and gear shift timings. This being the kind of setup now expected in this class, which allows you to tailor the drive responses via three main options, comfort, eco and sport. Unfortunately, Dynamic Select doesn't give you any kind of set and forget auto setting, but you do get to play with an almost infinitely configurable individual mode that allows you to alter your own parameters. What you can't do is allow the modes to alter suspension feel, Mercedes having decided not to offer adaptive damping, even as an option on any mainstream CLA model. For that, you'll need one of the two performance Mercedes AMG versions of this car, either the 306 horsepower CLA 35 4Matic, which offers adaptive damping at extra cost, or the 421 horsepower CLA 45S 4Matic Plus, which gets it built into its AMG ride control system. Both variants use four-cylinder twin turbo power, but in very different forms. In the AMG 35 model, the engine on offer is merely a revised version of the mainstream 2-litre unit fitted to this CLA 250, though it's upgraded with a Borg Warner twin scroll turbo. It's mated to a much sharper shifting auto gearbox, though, an AMG Speedshift DCT 7-speed setup, featuring more urgent control software and case hardening for the first three ratios to allow for tyre smoking starts. Standard all-wheel drive and a race start launch control mode should keep the sticky Pirelli P0 tyres from spinning themselves into smoky oblivion, so in almost all conditions you should be able to get somewhere near the quoted rest to 62 mile an hour time of 4.9 seconds, which is pretty close to the kind of performance delivered by the previous generation AMG Fettled CLA 45 model. That's the case because AMG 45 series motoring in a CLA has gone up a gear this time round. This top variant gets one of the Afalterback tuning division's bespoke power plants, a heavily retuned version of the previous CLA 45's M133 series unit, which our market only gets in uprated S form. This is an engine capable of propelling this car to 62 miles an hour in four seconds dead, so buyers will need the AMG high performance braking system. The brand thinks that buyers of this derivative will be serious drivers, hence the provision of an extra race option on the Dynamic Select driving mode system and further circuit-orientated AMG Dynamic Plus drive settings, including a drift mode and a track pace app, perfect for measuring your progress on circuit driving days. Sales of the 35 and 45 AMG variants will be relatively minimal in our market though, which is why for this test we have a greater focus on mainstream models like this one. Yes, to some extent there's a sporting feel here, but for most buyers this car's overriding appeal will have more to do with its fashionable stance and trendy technology. Both of which demand that this second generation CLA design should, to some extent at least, borrow elements of the semi-autonomous driving tech that now features in this car's larger CLS series Mentor model. Hence the opportunity the brand's offering for buyers of this car to pay quite a lot extra for the optional driving assistance package. This gives you the Mercedes Active Distance Assist Distronic system, which is designed to operate on a dual carriageway and works with the Mercedes Active Steering Assist setup to virtually drive the car for you as long as you keep a hand on the wheel. We think a typical CLA buyer would be intrigued at the thought of that. He or she will be tech savvy and admiring of the clever cabin and sporty stance. Mercedes, you see, has very precisely targeted its market here. CLA buyers know what they like, and for the most part, they'll like what they find here. By any measure, this is a distinctive car. It always was. Whether it's the 
modern design icon Mercedes thinks it is, well, that's another question. In this guise, and in its alternative shooting brake form, this second-generation C118 series model is certainly a sleeker, more sophisticated thing than its predecessor. This four-door coupe variant is now more closely aligned to its CLS model mentor than that previous C117 series CLA design. That car was, in its way, quite an eye-catching thing, but to some extent, something of an A-class saloon on a very dressy evening out. You'd certainly now be less likely to pigeonhole this car as any sort of saloon. This Mark II model no longer called upon to play that role since Mercedes launched a separate sedan body style into the fourth generation A-Class lineup. That free designer Gordon Wagner and his team up to be a little more expressive with the CLA this time around. Hence the lengthier, slightly lower roofline, the long stretch bonnet and the compact glass house all of it delivering a more elegant silhouette. The fussy, banana-shaped creases that embellish the old C117 series models' stylized flanks have been replaced by sleeker, simpler detailing, with just this subtle swage line flowing up towards GT-style rear haunches that incorporate what Wagner calls a Coke bottle shoulder. As is the current trend, the wheels are a size larger too. There's nothing smaller than 18-inch rims on offer, which is what we have here. The front end's certainly more purposeful. The twin power-domed bonnet flowing down into flatter, thinner LED high-performance headlights, uprated here to multi-beam LED status, which enables them to continually adapt themselves to road conditions and other motorists. The headlamps flank this smart, single louvre diamond-style grille, embellished by glistening chrome pins, which sits above a slimmer lower intake that emphasises the 63mm increase in front track width, that outlet featuring wider corner cutouts on either side. The rear has a different feel too, mainly because the sharper edge tail lamps now have full LED illumination and are narrower and wider. It also makes a difference that the number plate is now lower, set seamlessly into the bumper above a lower diffuser section, spartaned with the addition of this full width chrome strip. Here, once more, the idea is to give the impression of greater width. Again, not an illusion. The track width at the back is 55 millimetres wider this time round. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. In this case, the stiff, sophisticated MFA2 compact car platform, which this CLA shares with all of Mercedes' other current front-driven compact models. It's primarily because of this chassis that this second-generation CLA manages to be 15 kilograms lighter than its predecessor, despite being a couple of inches longer and wider. OK, time to check out the part of this car which Mercedes promise will really sell it to you, the interior. Now, in the past, the brand has often struggled to build compact, affordable cars that feel like, well, a Mercedes. Is this one different? Absolutely. In fact, in its own way, this cabin is as distinctive as the exterior silhouette, with unique interior architecture shaped by the avant-garde design of the dashboard. Now, you'll have seen this sort of layout before, if you're familiar with any of Mercedes' other most recent models, a so-called widescreen cockpit concept that does away with the kind of cowled instrument binnacle that almost every other car on the market has to have. As a result, the wing-shaped main body of the fascia extends from one side of the cabin to the other with no visual discontinuity. All of that is as it would be in an A-Class, a B-Class or a GLA. But here, as CLA customers would want, it's all fashioned into a cabin with a sportier, higher-end feel. Black leather-stitched sports seats with integrated head restraints position you lower in front of a race-style, flat-bottomed, Napa leather-trimmed steering wheel. And you're surrounded by premium touches, a glossy piano-black-coated centre console that flows up into the dash, 
and intricately fashioned door cards filleted with aluminium and double-stitched hide panels. Three circular vents decorate the mid-level part of the centre stack, with two further ones at either end of the dash. That's as before, though this time round, these outlets are an integral part of the classy ambient lighting system that brings the interior alive at night, especially when, as here, it's upgraded to 64 colour status. The real talking point here, though, remains the widescreen cockpit package made up of two elongated rectangular colour TFT screens, one for the centre dash infotainment system, the other for the dials you view through the sophisticated three-spoke multifunction steering wheel. This instrument cluster screen is seven inches in size with standard AMG line trim, but you'll almost certainly want to upgrade to one of the premium packs that enlarges it to 10.25 inches. That way, it'll exactly match the size of the center media display, your access point for all the expected features. A DAB tuner, sections for apps and Wi-Fi connectivity, informational screens with wondrous graphics, and standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. There's also hard disk navigation too, of course, optionally upgradable to advanced navigation status with what Mercedes calls augmented reality technology. This is effectively a live camera feed of the road ahead, overlaid with house numbers, road names, direction arrows, and other useful bits of information that'll help you find your way. With the two larger screens in place, as here, you really get the full intended widescreen effect, your portal for interacting with what's intended to be one of this car's technological highlights, its new MBUX, or Mercedes-Benz User Experience Multimedia System. This is supposed to take in-car connectivity to a new level, primarily thanks to the way that the Stuttgart maker has tried to simplify access to all this car's media connectivity by making many more of the functions accessible without manual operation. There's gesture functionality, for example, via which, once perfected, you can do things like program the sat-nav and alter seat settings. You're more likely, though, to regularly use this car's provided Hey Mercedes voice-activated functionality, the brand name designating the greeting you'll need to address to the screen in order to get its incorporated MBUX speech recognition setup working. As we've remarked when testing some of the company's other more recent models, this aspect of MBUX remains, in our view, something of a work in progress. Sometimes you'll think it's brilliant when finding you radio stations, for example, or telling you what the weather is at a programmed destination. At other times, though, if it responds at all, it either trips up over similar words like new and nude, for instance, or it chimes in when you don't want it to, say, when mentioning the word Mercedes in casual conversation. Can you say that again, please? So you'll still need to get very familiar with all the various manual touchpads that control the various infotainment elements, the main one being down here at the base of the centre stack. We don't especially like touchpad controllers. On the move, they're difficult to accurately use on anything but smooth surfaces. But this particular one is the best of its kind, with easy functionality helped by the surrounding shortcut buttons for navigation, radio, phone and vehicle features. Note to Lexus. Want to give customers touchpad controllers? This is how you do it. It deals with the various menus of the high-resolution media display just above, divided into radio, nav, phone, media, comfort and info segments, plus one for the various apps you'll be able to access, most notably the useful Mercedes Me setup. There are some really sophisticated graphics in play here, especially when it comes to the real-time displays you'll find in the vehicle section. The same functionality can be accessed via another tinier touchpad on the left-hand spoke of the steering wheel. And if you use that to access a provided center screen settings menu, you'll be able to customize the separate digital instrument monitor ahead of you via various design layouts. Choose from normal blue-tinged classic, yellow-themed sport, and an orange progressive dial display. And once you've decided what you want, you can use the other provided tiny touchpad on the right-hand steering wheel spoke to bring what you'd most like to see into regular view, which is possible because the two virtual dials are both customizable. If you don't want the left one in its usual guise as a speedometer, it can show either audio settings, consumption readings, trip computer, info, or a clock. The right-hand dial, meanwhile, would normally be a rev counter, but it can also show safety assistance info, a G-force readout, 
GPS mapping, a proactive eco display or consumption readouts. Finally, you can also tailor the area between the dials, the center part of the instrument binnacle screen, where you'd normally get a mileage readout. If you don't want that or the alternative trip computer data, then the various eco meter and consumption screens can also be selected here and on request, also expanded to fill the whole screen. Enough on connectivity, what else do you need to know about this cabin? Well, there are areas where this car's premium pretensions slip a little. The air vents, for example, don't feel to the touch as great as they look to the eye. Signs of cost saving can be found when you run your fingers around the edging, around the door bins, or note the lack of passenger or roof mounted grab handles. And if you happen to have forked out well over £35,000 for an upper spec version of this car, the rather flimsy column mounted transmission stalk it shares with a Mercedes Sprinter van may not be quite the kind of thing you'd have been expecting. Of course, if you've the money to spend on extras, there'll be plenty to distract you from niggles of this sort. An optional feature we really like is the energizing package, which combines music, lighting and selective seat massaging into a couple of selectable programs, refresh and vitality, aimed at rejuvenating you at the end of a tiresome day. There's also a training option aimed at relieving muscle strain on longer trips and an intelligent energizing coach feature that recommends individual programs based on the kind of journey you're on. It can even communicate with a smart watch or fitness tracker, should you be wearing one, then automatically select a perfectly suited energizing theme you can start directly just when you need it. What else? Well, getting comfortable on the flatter, more supportive seats is easy, thanks to plenty of seat and wheel adjustment. It's a pity, though, that you don't get lumbar adjustment as standard. That's only included as part of the electric seat package. What you don't have to pay extra for is parking assistance, which is just as well, because as with almost any car that's in any way coupe-like, over-the-shoulder vision in this one is somewhat compromised. All round sensors, a rear view camera and an auto parking system take care of that. A slight irritation lies in Mercedes insistence on providing little USB-C points rather than proper USB slots, which means the need for unsightly adapter leads in the areas where the twin ports are provided. There are two, this butterfly lidded box between the seats and this compartment at the bottom of the center stack, which has a lovely slatted top slides back to reveal twin cup holders and a wireless charging mat. There's also a reasonably sized glove box and door pockets with recesses for bottles and you additionally get a storage net in the front passenger footwell, ticket clips on the sun visors and an overhead sunglasses compartment up around this dual light lighting panel which incorporates buttons for the emergency assistance and SOS call features. As for backseat accommodation, well, any car that describes itself as a four-door coupe clearly isn't going to have this as a top priority. Fashion is the keynote here, which is why you're provided with these lovely frameless doors, just like a pricey CLS model in the next class up. Negotiate around the plunging roof line and get yourself inside, though. And it is a little surprising to find that despite this car being 9mm longer than a current W205 generation Mercedes C-Class saloon, it offers significantly less space for rearward passengers. It isn't just a question of restricted legroom, though there's nothing like as much of that as you'd expect from a car 4.7 metres in length. In most cases, adults will require assistance from passengers ahead if they're to feel in any way really comfortable. There's also the issue of headspace. We can't recall ever having sat in the back of a four-door car with less of it. Courtesy of the swept back roof line from seat base to ceiling, there's 34 millimeters less room for the top of your scalp than you get in that comparable C-Class saloon we just mentioned. And other things don't help either. The rather over-large door handles intrude into your elbow room, and you have to wonder why a predominantly front-driven car needs such a high transmission tunnel as this. As a result, you're even less able to fit three folk across this bench than you would otherwise be. Not that you'd really want to subject a trio of folk above school age to such an ordeal. The seat at the back here is dynamically styled with integral headrests, 
but its base is really only sculpted for two, and thanks to the bodywork's high waistline and the standard issue rear privacy glass, there's something of a claustrophobic feel back here. Though that recedes slightly in this particular case, thanks to the fitment of a large panoramic glass roof up front. That's a pricey optional feature, but you really need it in this car. We can carry on carping about this kind of stuff, as other commentators do, but it's pretty irrelevant because if you really cared about rear seat space, you'd be spending the same kind of money on either an A-class sedan or that C-class saloon instead. CLA buyers don't tend to use these rear pews for any occupants other than kids and point out rightly that it's much more spacious back here than it would be in the kind of two-door coupe they might otherwise have bought. Practical touches include seat back nets, overhead reading lights and door bins that are slightly more spacious than they first appear. Twin central vents plus a pull-out compartment with twin USB-C slots sit over the transmission tunnel. And if you avoid entry-level trim, there's this central armrest with pop-out cup holders. Well, let's finish with a look at the boot accessed on this four-door model, either by clicking on the key fob or by pressing in the top part of the brand badge. Now, given the length increase, this second generation CLA has a rear overhang stretching beyond a metre long, we'd hope for a bit more room here. But for some reason, boot capacity has actually fallen to 460 litres. That's 10 litres less than before. Still, that's 5 litres more than you get in most C-Class saloons and 40 litres more than you get in a four-door A-Class. If this isn't enough and you really want a CLA, there's the option of switching to the Shooting Brake Estate variant, which offers 505 litres of capacity with all the seats in place. That's 10 litres more than before. If you're happy with this four-door coupe model, you'll have to lump your stuff over quite a high boot lip to get it in. Still, once you have, recessed areas to the left and right mean that bulky things like golf club bags should go in widthways. You also get four tie-down points and a little extra space beneath the boot floor too, though only because Mercedes declines to offer any kind of spare wheel. This spray-painted upper roof section to the boot area doesn't feel very premium, but a nice touch is the way that this detachable reflector panel is integrated into the inside of the boot lid. If you need to take longer items like skis, you'll be pleased to see that the rear backrest has a convenient 40-20-40 split so that the centre section can fold forward without disturbing a couple of rear-seated folk. If you need more room, and you need to fully lower the rear backrest, these two upper boot-mounted catches are provided for the purpose. Unfortunately, they're not much use. First, because the backrests aren't spring-loaded, so you have to go round and manually fold them forward anyway. And even if they were, you'll almost always find that the integral headrests foul the seat in front when they fold forward, meaning that if you want to extend the boot area, the front seats will usually have to be pushed slightly towards the dash. Again, all of this is less of an issue with the shooting brake body style, which offers a 1,370 litre total capacity with everything folded flat. Or at least it does in the mainstream models anyway. With the high performance A35 and A45 shooting brake models, that total figure falls substantially to 960 litres. As before, most CLA models will be sold in the 30 to 40,000 pound bracket. Though pricing for the Mercedes AMG 35 or 45 formatic performance variants is spread liberally throughout the 40 to 60,000 pound segment. All engines come with a choice of two body styles, either this four-door coupe or for another 1,000 pounds, the alternative shooting brake estate body shape that many CLA buyers will want. The mainstream range doesn't bother with the entry-level SE or sport trim grades you'd get with an A-Class, choosing instead to base itself around the smarter AMG line level of spec that better suits this CLA's fashionable feel. As we'll see, customers will get the option to embellish this with premium and premium plus packs. 
Let's drill down into the detail a little. Now, under the bonnet, where there's nothing bigger than four cylinders in size, all the mainstream petrol power plants can only be had with a 7G DCT seven-speed auto gearbox. And you get a choice of four engine variants. If you take the view that a car with these kinds of aspirations ought not to use a relatively humble 1.3 litre petrol unit sourced from Renault, you might want to avoid the base CLA 180 and CLA 200 versions, which respectively offer 136 and 163 horsepower outputs. If so, that'll mean the starting spend upwards from around £33,000 for one of the alternative 2 litre models. Not much in terms of price separates the 190 HP CLA220 from the 224 HP CLA250, but the lesser model can be had with the £1,600 option of 4MATIC four-wheel drive. If you prefer the idea of fueling from the black pump, Mercedes offers buyers of the 190 horsepower CLA220D its frugal 2-litre OM654 series diesel unit which has to be paired to an 8-speed, 8 8G DCT 8-speed automatic transmission. Prices for that variant start from around £35,000. Potential buyers of the Mercedes-AMG CLA Coupe and shooting brake models might also be afflicted with a certain degree of engine snobbery. Yes, all the variants in question are 2-litre twin-turbo petrol-powered, but if you take the view that a Mercedes-AMG model ought to have a bespoke engineered Mercedes-AMG power plant, engineered with that sub-brand's classic one-man, one-engine design approach, then you might not want the more accessible of the two derivatives, the A35 4MATIC. This uses what is essentially just a development of the 2-litre engine used further down the range, uprated to 306 horsepower, and it utilises basically the same 7G DCT 7-speed auto gearbox as lesser CLAs. If that doesn't bother you and you're in the market for a really quick yet relatively accessible CLA, then you'll want to know that the CLA 35 versions are available with standard premium or premium plus levels of trim at prices which, as we alluded to before, from launch started from around £40,000. If, though, nothing but full fat, a Falterback engineering will do, you have to stretch to the top Mercedes AMG 45S 4Matic Plus variant. That's a 421 horsepower road burner, which uses an 8G DCT 8-speed auto gearbox, and which from launch was priced from around £52,000 in standard form, or around 58000 if you were to go for the fully equipped Plus version. Before we get into rivals from other brands, let's first look at this pricing from a Mercedes perspective. There's quite a premium to pay for high fashion, it seems. A version of the A-Class hatch with exactly the same engineering and trim will cost you around £3,000 less than an equivalent CLA. A more direct comparison might be with an A-Class saloon, where the price margin to an identically engined and similarly specced CLA narrows closer to £2,000. You could even have a B-Class MPV with much the same trim and engineering used in a CLA for around £2,000 less. At first, the more classically styled rear-driven Mercedes C-Class saloon looks as if it will cost you less than a CLA too. At the time of this test, C-Class sedan pricing started from around £29,000. But if you equalise spec and power in comparing CLA and C-Class saloon, the picture changes. Take, for instance, the volume seller here, a petrol CLA 200 with 163 horsepower, which in four-door coupe form cost from launch from around £33,000. A comparable C180 saloon with 156 horsepower and equivalent AMG line edition trim and auto transmission cost just under £36,000 at the time of this test. Interesting. Compare diesels in the two model lineups, and the difference in this CLA's favour is even greater. True, the C Class saloon does have more rear passenger space, but the CLA counters with a significantly bigger boot. There's an even greater price gap if you happen to be comparing this CLA with a two-door C-Class Coupe. Think in terms of just over £4,000 as ever. It depends what you want. What about rivals from other premium manufacturers? Well, given the success of this CLA's compact four-door Coupe concept, you'd have expected premium brand rivals to copy it by now. But strangely, there's still nothing quite like this Mercedes. 
Audi's A3 saloon gets closest, but that's not really coupe-like, which makes that Ingolstadt contender really more of a direct rival for the A-Class saloon model we just mentioned. BMW offers a saloon version of its One Series model for the Chinese market, but doesn't sell it in Europe. And anyway, that car isn't very coupe-like either. What else? Well, a Jaguar XE is somewhere close to the kind of car this CLA is trying to be and is similarly priced to upper spec CLAs. But that Jag is really more three box shaped and therefore more of a C-Class saloon rival. Of course, if you expand your buying room to include volume brands and slightly larger saloons with coupe-like rear styling, you'll have plenty more choice. CLA money would get you well-equipped versions of sleek sedans like Peugeot's 508 or Volvo's S60. And if you were prepared to consider models with a rear hatch, also maybe Volkswagen's Arteon and the Kia Stinger. But enough with alternatives. As we've just said, there's nothing quite like a CLA. And if you agree and find yourself attracted to this car, then you're going to need to know just how generous Mercedes has been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. The standardization of AMG line trim for our market means that all mainstream models get AMG body styling for the front apron, the rear apron, and the side skirts. Plus this diamond style single louvre radiator grille embellished by chrome pins. You also get these five spoke 18 inch titanium gray alloy wheels with Mercedes branded calipers, along with LED high performance headlamps, privacy glass, LED tail lamps, power folding mirrors, also headlamps and wipers, and an active parking assist with Parktronic system that includes all round sensors with a rear view camera and will automatically steer you into spaces. The Shooting Brake Estate version gets a powered Easy Pack tailgate too. Inside, the base level of AMG line trim has just enough to make you feel special. The upholstery is trimmed in black leather, matched to aluminium grain trim inlays. Plus, you get sports seats, cool ambient lighting, a black roof liner, stainless steel sports pedals, AMG floor mats, and a multifunction Nappa leather-stitched sports steering wheel. Along with two-zone thermotronic air conditioning, a wireless phone charger, and also dimming rear view mirror, heated front seats, cruise control, and a speed limiter. As usual with a Mercedes, there's also the Dynamic Select Driving Mode system, which allows you to adjust throttle response, steering feel and gear shift timings to suit the way you want to drive. The real CLA cabin talking point, though, is the clever MBUX or Mercedes-Benz user experience multimedia infotainment system, which is controlled by two high-resolution screens. With base AMG line trim, you get a 7-inch one for the instrument cluster and a 10.25-inch touchscreen media display in the centre of the dash. The MBUX system is built around the brand's Hey Mercedes voice activation system, which you'll quickly find yourself using to operate many of the interior features. These include a six speaker, 100 watt DAB audio setup, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring, and a live traffic information feature that's free for the first three years of ownership. There's hard disk navigation too, of course, plus three years use of the Mercedes navigation services setup, which allows the car to answer questions about your journey. Things like fuel prices along your route, available parking spaces at your destination, or the current weather. Talking of information technology, like most premium brands, Mercedes has developed systems that allow you to monitor many aspects of your vehicle from your smartphone. Every CLA model comes as standard with the Mercedes Me Connect vehicle monitoring package, which works via a free app. This reminds you when a service is due and can automatically detect and share with you details on your car's wear and tear items. In addition, the app gives you a one-touch button for fast accident and breakdown recovery and automatically alerts the rescue services in the event of an accident. It can even track your CLA if it's stolen, tell you if it's left pre-agreed geographical boundaries if you lend it out, preset the cabin climate before you reach the car and tell you where the vehicle is if you forgot where you've parked it. 
All of this is included across the CLA range. Most buyers, though, are probably going to want to find the extra for one of the two extra cost packs that your dealer will urge you to consider. Around £1,400 more gets you the premium pack, which completes this CLA's full width double screen cabin layout with a bigger 10.25 inch instrument cluster. Other premium pack inclusions run to keyless entry, an upgraded 225 watt sound system, illuminated door sills, a rear armrest and an enhanced ambient lighting package offering a choice of 64 colours. This pack also enhances the sat-nav system with a feature that Mercedes calls augmented reality navigation. This is effectively a live camera feed of the road ahead, overlaid with house numbers, road names, direction arrows and other useful bits of information that will help you find your way. The pack also includes traffic sign assist, which pictures speed signs as you pass, displaying them on the dash. If you want more, the Premium Plus pack we've been trying here also includes more sophisticated multi-beam LED headlamps with 84 individually controllable high-performance LEDs that constantly adapt themselves specifically to road conditions and other motorists. Other Premium Plus inclusions run to the panoramic glass roof we'd really want given this car's rather dark high-sided interior and there's a head-up display powered front seats with memory settings and lumbar support a 590 watt Burmester surround sound system and traffic sign assist which links with the speed limiter to automatically adapt your velocity to posted limits the plus pack also includes the energizing package which combines music lighting and selective seat massaging into a couple of selectable programs, refresh and vitality, aimed at rejuvenating you at the end of a tiresome day. That energising technology also incorporates a training option aimed at relieving muscle strain on longer trips and an intelligent energising coach feature that recommends individual programs based on the kind of journey you're on. The software can even communicate with a smartwatch or fitness tracker, should you be wearing one, before then automatically selecting a perfectly suited, energising theme. You can start directly just when you need it. As you'd expect, the two high-performance Mercedes AMG models have slightly different level of spec and stand out from the lesser variants, courtesy of elements like an AMG radiator grill with a twin-blade lamella and a more overtly styled rear apron with a bolder diffuser insert. All A35s get a bicolour finish for their 18-inch AMG wheels, AMG branded brake calipers and an exhaust system with an automatically controlled flap, plus an AMG performance steering wheel and extra Sport Plus and slippery settings for the dynamic select driving mode system. In addition, as an A35 buyer, you can add the Premium and Premium Plus packs we just mentioned, if you wish. If nothing but the top A45 model will do, then as you'd expect for the money, a huge amount of standard spec comes included. Key features include flared arches for the larger 19-inch AMG wheels, through the spokes of which you can glimpse the red calipers of the AMG high-performance braking system. 45 buyers also get even more overt treatment for the front apron and rear diffuser, along with larger 90mm tailpipes, plus AMG suspension with AMG ride control. High gloss black night package exterior trimming comes included, as does keyless entry and a 225 watt sound system. In addition, you get an extra race option on the dynamic select driving mode system and further circuit orientated AMG Dynamic Plus drive settings, including a drift mode and a track pace app, perfect for measuring your progress on circuit driving days. Should you want to go further, the top plus version of the 45 series CLA additionally adds forged cross-spoke alloy wheels, adaptive damping and race style AMG performance seats with a massaging function, along with blind spot assist and four key features from the premium plus pack we were talking about earlier. The multi-beam LED headlamps, the panoramic glass sunroof, the Burmester sound system and the traffic sign assist speed limiter. 
Okay, so we've covered the standard spec of mainstream models, along with those key premium and premium plus packs you'll probably want to look at, and the spec of the two Mercedes AMG Performance CLA variants. Is there anything else about the standard or optional spec of this model line that we need to draw your attention to before we get on to looking at issues of safety provision? Well, bear in mind that unless you go for an exterior shade from the rather limited solid colour palette, we've got Jupiter Red here, you'll need to be paying Mercedes more for metallic paint. If you've really very few budget limitations, there's an exclusive Designio Mountain Grey Magno option that gives you a really trendy matte style finish for around £1,800. If you happen to be a buyer considering the Mercedes AMG A35 performance version, you'll be offered the option of adaptive damping. And on this variant, you might find the styling differences we mentioned over more standard CLA derivatives to be a little over subtle, in which case your dealer will direct you to the optional AMG Knight package. This gives you larger 19-inch AMG wheels, rear dark-tinted glass, a painted front splitter and a black chrome-plated tailpipe plus high gloss black trim for the side sill panels, the belt line trim, the mirror housings and the front splitter. Not enough? Well, maybe you can only stretch to an A35, but you want it to have the really ferocious exterior look of the more powerful 45 model. If so, you'll need the optional AMG style package. This gives you all the AMG night package features just mentioned, plus virtually all the extra little AMG aerodynamics package elements that visually set that top A45 variant apart, including a more overt front apron and a big rear spoiler. On to safety. This car's MFA2 platform was one of the first to be engineered by Mercedes at the Brands Technology Centre for Vehicle Safety in Sindelfingen, which develops vehicle structures based on findings from research into real accidents. Every single body shell component of this model was developed according to the loads and stresses encountered in real-world crashes with respect to material thickness, sheet steel quality, and joining technology. And of course, this CLA includes all the usual camera-driven kit. As standard, you get Active Brake Assist Autonomous Braking, one of those setups that scans the road ahead as you drive, warns you of potential accident hazards, and is also capable of autonomously braking the car if you don't respond to the warnings, or perhaps aren't able to. Testing has indicated that this whole setup will eradicate 20% of nose-to-tail accidents and decrease their severity to a further 25% of cases. Active Lane Keeping Assist is also standard across the CLA range, able not only to warn you if you drift across lane markings, but also capable of applying subtle steering lock to ease the car back to where it ought to be. In addition, Mercedes includes another important camera safety feature, Attention Assist, which monitors your driving reactions to detect drowsiness. Plus, the Mercedes Me Connect app we mentioned earlier includes an e-call emergency call system that will automatically alert the emergency services to your exact location should the airbags be deployed in an accident. More familiar standard safety stuff includes ABS brakes that automatically prime themselves in wet weather and flash the rear lights in emergency stops to warn following motorists. Plus, there's an ESP stability control system with acceleration skid control and curve dynamic assist for extra cornering traction. If all that's not enough to keep you out of the hedge, there are also twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus a driver's knee bag, anti-whiplash head restraints, Isofix child seat fastenings, a deformable steering column, crash responsive emergency lighting and a pedestrian friendly bonnet. Plus, you get a tyre pressure monitoring system, speed limit assist displays, speed signs as you pass on the car's digital displays, and this hill start assist to stop you from rolling backwards on uphill junctions. 
If you want to go further and get some of the choicest elements of Mercedes camera-driven safety tech, you'll need to budget an extra £1,500 for the optional driving assistance package, which includes 10 key extra elements, amongst which are features that also give this car limited autonomous driving capability. So let's talk you through it all after pointing out that you can only specify this pack if you've already paid extra for the Premium Plus equipment line we were talking about earlier. And for some reason, you can't have all these extra safety features at all on the top A45 model, though that car does include an active blind spot assist system within its optional plus pack. Anyway, back to what you'll get if you decide to pay to have the optional driving assistance package included with your CLA. We just mentioned active blind spot assist, so let's start with that. It can warn you of vehicles in your blind spot during a lane change. It can help to avoid a collision by means of one-sided braking intervention. If a lane change on the highway is safe to make, the car can deal with it for you using an active lane change assist feature that only requires you to activate the direction indicator. There's braking stuff too, of course. The active braking assist with cross traffic function feature can help to avoid accidents with vehicles ahead, with crossing traffic and also with pedestrians and or mitigate their consequences. And active emergency stop assist can bring the car to a safe controlled stop should you become incapacitated. There's also the clever pre-safe plus anticipatory system which can sense a rear end collision fractions of a second before it happens and so before impact will be able to automatically pre-tension the seat belts, close the windows and if fitted position the power sunroof and electric seats to provide for optimum crash survival. There's also an evasive steering assist that can support you in making evasive manoeuvres if a pedestrian or cyclist suddenly appears in your path. Plus, a clever route-based speed adjustment feature works with GPS data to automatically adapt your speed before curves, roundabouts and junctions. As we mentioned, the driving assistance package also includes limited autonomous driving capability to suit the mood of the moment. That comes courtesy of the PAC's Active Distance Assist Distronic system, which is designed to operate on a dual carriageway and works with the Mercedes Active Steering Assist setup. The Distronic feature is basically a super advanced adaptive cruise control that automatically regulates your distance to the car in front and can, if necessary, remotely slow the car with up to 50% of stopping power. Active steering assist keeps you in the centre of your designated lane and will, if needed, apply subtle steering correction to ease you back to where you should be. The whole setup also works with active speed limit assist, which ensures that detected speed limits are automatically adopted as the set speed for the Active Distance Assist Distronic system. It's all very reassuring. The model designations of this second generation CLA may be very similar to those of the previous model, but the Euro 60 temp engine technology they reference has moved on quite a bit. It's difficult to say by just how much, as the industry measuring standard changed to a stricter WLTP or World Harmonised Light Vehicle Test Procedure system in 2018. The consumption figures we'll give you have been measured to that cycle, but at the time of this test in the late summer of 2019, Mercedes was still quoting emissions ratings compiled to the new NEDC or New European Driving Cycle Standard, since British taxation bans hadn't then yet switched to figures using the new system of measurement. Let's get to the figures. The entry level 136 horsepower CLA 180 and 163 horsepower CLA 200 derivatives both use the same 1.3 litre Renault sourced high compression four cylinder petrol engine with the 180 derivative capable of up to 47.9 mpg on the combined cycle and 126 grams per kilometre. We'd expected that the CLA 200 version might do slightly better than that despite its greater power output thanks to the incorporation of cylinder deactivation technology 
technology that disables two of the engine's four cylinders at mid to low throttle speeds. As it is, that variant merely replicates the lesser model stats. Mercedes has chosen, for the time being at least, not to offer this car with any kind of mild hybrid or plug-in assisted electrification, so folk needing something more efficient will be directed to the single CLA 220D diesel variant. This gets the latest 2.0-litre OM654 series diesel unit we've been impressed with in other Mercedes models, an engine that works with a second selective catalyst reduction unit secreted beneath the car's platform. This allows this engine engine to be one of the few of its kind able to pass forthcoming and extremely stiff at European WLTP D emission testing. The standard stats are decent too, seeing up to 57.7 mpg being possible on the combined cycle and 114 grams per kilometre of CO2. As you'd expect, this diesel uses the usual AdBlue technology. The tank for the AdBlue liquid has its own filler neck next to the fuel filler and is large, 23.8 litres in size, so ensuring for long refilling intervals. Here we've chosen the 2-litre petrol engine that many CLA buyers tend to want, which delivers up to 42.2 mpg and 138 grams per kilometre, regardless of whether you order the 190 HP CLA 220 model or this 224 HP CLA 250. The 220 can be had with 4MATIC four-wheel drive, which blunts frugality a little, the fuel figure down to 40.4 mpg, and cleanliness quite a lot, the CO2 reading down to 148 grams grams per kilometre. Basically, the same engine also features in twin turbo form in the Mercedes AMG A35 model, which manages up to 37.2 mpg and up to 164 grams per kilometre of CO2. The bespoke 2-litre unit in the top Mercedes AMG CLA 45S manages up to 34.5 mpg and 189 grams per kilometre. All the figures just quoted are aided by this car's optimised aerodynamics. This second generation model's 0.23 CD drag factor is no better than before, but the CLA remains one of the sleekest compact models it's possible to buy. This is aided by almost complete underbody panelling, aero-orientated wheels and lots of little touches like tiny wheel arch spoilers with longitudinal fins that help air to flow around the tyres and alloy rims. Plus, of course, there are all the usual elements of energy-saving engineering. Things like low rolling resistance tyres, brake energy regeneration, electric power steering, an adjustable radiator shutter and intelligent management of engine auxiliaries like the alternator, the oil feed and the water pump. As usual, you get an eco start-stop function that cuts the engine when you don't need it, waiting at the lights or stuck in traffic. And in addition, the auto gearbox features a sailing function that disconnects engine drive at a cruise for greater efficiency. Even the full LED headlights help, using about 70% less energy than traditional halogen lamps. To get anywhere near the quoted official figures on a regular basis, you'll need to make sure that you're regularly using your CLA in its dynamic select driving mode system's most frugal eco setting. This marginally limits the accelerator pedal curve and also slightly restricts the output of the seat heating, the heated rear window and the climate control system. Plus, it automatically activates that sailing feature for the automatic gearbox that we are just talking about. The fuel consumption section on the central MBUX display screen gives you graphical evidence of your success or otherwise in achieving maximum frugality over different recent time periods, 7.5, 30, 90 or 180 minutes. And a vehicle screen shows the percentage of gas, that means throttle, or brake pressure you're using at any given time. We particularly like the Eco display which can show on the instrument binnacle grading you on acceleration, constant motion motion and the amount of fuel-free coasting you've done. This graphic is also incorporated into a larger efficiency briefing layout which also shows driving range and regenerative braking charge. An eco display is also provided on the Mercedes Me Connect app.
What else? Well, residuals are satisfyingly strong by class standards. Independent experts reckon that a CLA 250 model like this one will still be worth 50% of what you pay for it after three years and 30,000 miles of use. We'd normally place a caution here to the effect that going mad on the options list would put a bit of a dent in expected depreciation. Though in this case, there's the caveat that used buyers will be actively seeking models upgraded at least to premium status, which gets you the instrument display in the same 10.25 inch size as the central media screen. And insurance? Well, you can insure your car through Mercedes, though most company drivers will have this element included in their lease cost. If you do pay the insurance on your car, you might want to know that the base CLA 180 variant requires Group 27 insurance. With the CLA 200, it's Group 29 or 30, depending on the spec you choose. The CLA 220 is Group 33 or 34, the CLA 200D diesel is Group 34, and this CLA 250 petrol is Group 35. You'll pay more for Mercedes AMG Performance Engineering, of course. The CLA 35, for instance, is up at Group 42 or 43. Most CLA models will cost £140 a year to tax, but most Mercedes AMG variants will crest the £40,000 price barrier, which will result in a £310 annual VED surcharge. As you'd expect, the Mercedes Aftercare package is comprehensive, with a three-year unlimited mileage warranty that matches BMW. This is built upon by Mercedes Mobilo scheme, which delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years, as long as you continue to have your car serviced as a Mercedes main dealer. Ah yes, maintenance, as usual, with one of the Stuttgart brand's models, there's an Assist Plus dashboard service indicator that monitors engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visit is due. For reference, servicing is usually required every 15,500 miles or every year, whichever comes first. Fixed price servicing is available across the range and most buyers opt for the Mercedes service care plan that could cost you as little as about £28 a month based either on a two service, two year deal, three years with three services or four years with four services. Whatever package you opt for, it'll cover the cost of all recommended service items such as brake fluid, spark plugs, air filters, fuel filters and screen wash. It's also worth mentioning that the standard Mercedes Me Connect services package includes remote self-diagnostic capability, enabling your CLA to monitor wear and tear items and alert your local dealer to let you know if something needs seeing to. In second generation form, the CLA continues to expand the Mercedes brand's customer base. The people who buy one almost certainly wouldn't want anything else the company offers at this price point, and rival saloon and estate models look rather conformist by comparison with this four-door coupe or its shooting brake station wagon counterpart. In short, both versions of this car remain something of a breath of fresh air in this part of the market. Partly, that's because the CLA doesn't just rely on traditional brand values like comfort, quality and safety. Instead, it majors on style, an uber-fashionable cabin and impressive digital connectivity to bring a new breed of buyer to the three-pointed star. There's no point complaining about the rather cramped rear cabin. If you cared about that, you'd buy saloon versions of the A-Class or the C-Class for similar money. Are there other issues? Well, not many. This second generation model is a more mature, better rounded product that in both four door coupe and shooting brake forms wears its premium price tag more credibly than its predecessor did. True, we've been left feeling that there are elements of the drive dynamics that could be slightly more polished, mainly in terms of refinement from engine and transmission, but there's nothing in that to really dissuade you if you set your heart on a CLA. Which is quite possible. This may be a niche product, but Mercedes has found that it carries a near volume level of appeal in some of its key markets. It's a model that's redefined what the brand stands for in the eyes of many potential buyers, exactly as it was meant to.